history books here as we march on to the gold medal match. I've been waiting for this one, man. As soon as these brackets filled out, we've got history. And what we'll talk about first, Monica Mahalik coming out there from Poland. John, she is to say she's a veteran would be an understatement. She's the same age as both of us. Yeah. She turned 37 years old today. Will it be a happy birthday for her? Let's find out. She's got three golds, three silvers, and three bronzes in her career at the World Championships. Her first medal at the Europeans, 2002. Wow, that's incredible. That's 15 years ago. And what a contrast, Tybee, you seen. Well, she was three years old at that point. Oh, well, she was, she was 10. Well. <laughs> My, um, mathematics is obviously not my strong point, but I took statistics three times in college, go figure. I like <laughs> it. The old ones are the old ones, but who's going to add the most important statistic at the end of this one? This one for the gold medal in the 63 kilograms. The 25-year-old from Sofia, Taibi Usain. Yeah. She is the wrestler in blue going for it here. The highly experienced. And she's scrappy. At 25, she's got experience upon experience. She's got juniors world so she's got junior world medals. She's got she's won the she won uh, a silver medal in the Europeans twice while still at the junior age group. Both these wrestlers, Olympians, Mahalik coming off of bronze in Rio. But again, already has her 10th continental European championship medal in the bag. It's just depending on what color it's going to be. And Usain is. World silver medalist three times, a bronze medalist, junior world champ. I mean, this young woman is a terror on the mat. Well, who's going to be? She's got, a, she's got a fearsomeness to her too. She is not polite on the mat. Well, we saw that with the chance to watch the semi-finals when she was in a little bit of trouble, but had that determination, that tenacity, and that real eye of the tiger spirit to just get it done. Dug it out in the semi-finals, finds herself here in the final against Mihalik. But who's going to be in pole position? The Poland Red shoots round to the side to try and provide a little bit of angles here, using all of that experience to throw Usain off her guard at the moment. But the referee has a close look at both. But plenty of wrestling going on, but the referee has had that look, gets the whistle, and it is going to be the first warning there for Mihalik. A polite warning, not a full warning. So no shot clock on the go. Yeah, John, you alluded to uh, Usain coming from about 16-14 was that semi-final score against uh, against Strazakova, while uh, Mihalik to get here, you know, two solid wins, beat Decole from Italy and then beat Skayuna. 7-2, to two. so uh, workmanlike is the term, but uh, wild was Usain's win because Scrap City, yeah. that bout was wild. Well, she was down and out, but she finds herself very much in contention here, and it is the shot clock. Well, you can see it for yourself. Mihalik has the work to do as we reach into the last five seconds of that passivity clock. And clocking up the first points on the board. Tybee Usain. That could be useful. Yeah, the one point, and again, just with the rule change, the flow of the match continues. They don't blow the whistle and blow a stoppage. So we're going to see opportunity for these wrestlers to get to continue chain wrestling to find their, their locks, their ties, their favorite positions. And we will have the whistle blown dead as the referee felt there was nothing doing here. And we got a fresh start. Just over 30 seconds remaining here in this first period. Well, a slender lead for Usain. She reaches towards the end of this one. She's got a good hold there of Mihalik, sapping the energy of the pole, but not particularly looking at scoring. Just running the clock. It's been good work from the Bulgarian. Excellent start. And Mihalik came in with the pedigree. But she's going to go back to her coaches with lots to think about. Yeah, in that situation, what, what Usain did there was driving that head down. And when you're trying to spend all your, your energy, trying to just get your head up, it causes problems with the breathing, causes a problem with your endurance. It really does zap you. So when you hear wrestlers talk about, or people talk about wrestlers with heavy hands and, and clubs for hands, okay. it's going to bring you down that way because you expel so much energy trying to get your head back up into a position that's advantageous for, for not just 
on blocking, but just for being able for, for straight vision. So uh, you see just, you see there's a great job of just hanging on that head, hanging on that head, and making the helmet move up just to try to even get an angle. Well, you mentioned that aggressiveness of the Bulgarian, the 25-year-old from Sofia. It's paid dividends so far, but only a, a short return. And with Mihalik's incredible experience, one point is a minor deficit. Can she get on the offence here at the start? But it's that tough style from the Bulgarian. She doesn't care about reputation. She's right she's in the just, grill. She's just mean, dude. Yeah. It's like the, she's the personification of what a wrestler is to me. It's, she's just a bruising force on the mat. She's been fun to watch since he's a junior. Mihalik, savvy, also brings an element of toughness too. So sure. I mean, wrestlers contrasting styles, but also somewhat similar in some respects. Sure, contrasting styles and indeed contrasting fortunes as the referee puts the clock now against Usain. She's going to have to do something. Mihalik, in fact, still under pressure here at the pole. And we're getting into the business end of this final now. This one for the European Championship gold. The single leg attempt there. And good counter wrestling here by Mihalik. Now trying to change off on the front headlock. She's got short time before she gives up a point. They were trying to shuck it by, but does not finish. Gives up the point on the passivity. But now in a situation where she can clear that leg, comes around, gets the two on the takedown, and takes the lead via criteria. And that talk, that shows the benefit of the adaptation of the rules because Absolutely. they're allowed to continue. I, you know what? Well, you don't need me here. You set that up <laughs> perfectly. Well, a reversal of fortunes here. We've seen the aggressiveness and the desire of Usain Taibbi, but can the Bulgarian Adapt here, she thinks about a single leg attempt here. Good defense from Mihalik, the pole. And she's really beginning to put the pressure on now. She's got that experience. Can she dig in and make it difficult for Taibi Usain? I mean, John, I'm 37 and I'm getting tired watching this. It's, <laughs> it's amazing to compete at this level at this age. 37? And it's the intensity of all day. They'll have been up since 6 o'clock this morning, weighing in the day before. All of the battles they've been through to get to this point. And Mihalik, well, she, by the very merest of margins, as we creep into the final minute here, she can just about see a gold medal in the distance, but in her face, all the way through, has been tied by Usain. And let's enjoy this one. Yeah, and she's got the two-on-one -on -one tie here, and her head is up, and she's controlling the center of the match. So she does. She's doing everything she can to not get hit for a passivity to put her on the clock again. She's got 10 seconds to go before the passivity is is thrown out because you can't really start the 30-second clock if there's not 30 seconds left in the match. They see trying to push the action toward the edge with the overtime. Power tie, big club by Usain. She's now creating the action, forcing it, trying to create flurries and scrambles just like she did in her semifinal match. And then now Mihalik has to stay focused here. She cannot play the game. Be careful, looks like she's pulling a singlet there. And do we have a caution? Ooh, it looks like it was white paddle. Ooh, that was close. Hit on the leg, short time. Is there a push out? Out of bounds, one confirmed. And I think, I think the Bulgarians I think you're right to say that there is a potential protest because it was clear gripping I, of the single yeah, in the way through. They've got a real gripe there. A legitimate case here, and this could be pivotal because if the video replay is unsuccessful, another, another point, point on the board. However, in this case, it'll be the, the caution and two, and they will not put time back on the clock. So what that happened, that happened before that scoring sequence. So kind of one of the, the anomalies within how the review process works. But let's see if they, we've got a bigger, they've got the review up on the screen. And we'll wait to see what the call is from the officials on the mat. Well, we're in the gray area for the gold medal. This could be a game changer. You can see clearly there, Jason, the coach indicating exactly as you said, grabbing the singlet, looking for I mean, we're, penalty for that. We're up here on the third level looking down, and we saw it pretty clear. I think Mahalik may have gotten away with one there. Well, seeing things clearly now. Four seconds left in this one. And there comes the yellow card. We may have just missed it. Lisa! 
But apparently, yeah, you step up on the podium now, it's an automatic yellow. But well, who's going to be on top of the podium at the end here? You see, Tyree pushes it out and goes for the big score at the end. Has it been awarded? We have one from the referee, white pedal from the judge, one from the chairman, but we have a challenge. So that one may be a situation, John. Was time out? My goodness me, that's so many imponderables here. Points on the board in terms of, well, they're going to have a, a video replay, as you said. Had the clock stopped before that action commenced. So many things. Who would be a video judge reviewer at this stage? This is a tough one to call. I don't want to do it. <laughs> That's why I'm up here. Safer to be up here. We get the benefits of replay without the, uh, the situations of dealing with the athletes. Absolutely. But dealing with this one, they must because, well, you can see for yourself, the six minutes have elapsed. The coaches are absolutely exhausted. This is a game-changing moment, a European Championship goal-defining decision. Will it be Mihalik? Will it be Usain? Time is out. And there is no push-out. There is no throw. It looks like it's going to hold it, so after the review well it is indeed confirmation there you see Tybee gave absolutely everything but at 37 years old happy birthday indeed it is Monica Mahalik with that incredible gold medal there career titles that is her fourth European championship and tenth European medal, wow. And what a wonderful medal to add to the collection, a gold in potentially controversial circumstances, or was that an exhibition of the rules at its best? Well, I honestly think that she might have gotten away with the singlet pole there. I agree but with you. Again, I agree. we're, not, sure, uh, we're sure. not in that position. We didn't take the uh, certification classes. <laughs> and in terms of getting away with it, would they be judging on the fact if that was 